Well, 30 years ago, one of the most Minnesota movies of all time debuted in theaters. We, of course, are talking about Grumpy Old Men, a classic that seems to stand the test of time. In this week's Finding Minnesota, John Lordson shows us why Wabasha keeps embracing the film three decades later. We're really like a driftless little river town. That one's pretty worn. It's how Abby Oxendine yeah. describes the city she was born and raised in. Wabasha is known for the Mississippi, its eagle population, and a certain cantankerous movie. Why don't you tie your shoelace? You'll oh, fall on your up. stupid head. Anytime that somebody asks who I am and where I'm from and I tell them I'm from Wabasha, it's always, oh, the grumpy old men. That's what everybody knows Wabasha is. Everything is just so grumpy old men focused that you just become accustomed to it. That includes Brenda Pearson's bed and breakfast and her brewery. Hoppy girl. So pale wheat, chubby chipmunk. For 30 years, it's a pretty big deal. It's it's huge. It's notoriety this town never expected. See you later, Gustav. Grumpy Old Men was released as a romantic comedy based on the lives of fictional feuding neighbors John Gustafson and Max Goldman, played by the odd couple Jack Lemon and Walter Matthau. Man's crazy, loco. The two trade barbs and pranks throughout the film as they fight over love interest Ariel Truax, played by Anne Margaret. The movie's characters live in Wabasha, but very little of the film was shot there. Though Slippery's Bar and Grill does get a shout out, John, Max, and Ariel's houses were shot in St. Paul, and all the drugstore scenes were filmed in Faribault. But that hasn't stopped Wabasha from holding a festival in honor of the old grumps. Actually, Mark Steven Johnson, who wrote the movies, uh, called me and we had four rooms left. He took them all. He booked them for the town's 30th anniversary festival at the end of the month. Naturally, there's an ice fishing tournament, a grumpy plunge, spaghetti and chili feeds, and of course, a lot of plaid. That weekend, you will, it'll be a sea of plaid around town. As future grumpy old men ourselves, this is what we have to look forward to, flannel and then also hats with little ear flaps and stuff, correct? Yeah, I, I see it now. The festival also draws a lot of visitors from Red Wing, which is where Jesse Stewart manages Cinema 8. The snow angel scene was shot up the road at Memorial Hill, and Jesse remembers it well. And I remember seeing the Warner Brothers truck and the crew driving through um, that area. Can you believe it's been 30 years? Uh, no. <laughs> Blaine Marcoux was a studio mechanic for the movie and its sequel, and he got to know the actors. Oh, they were just very personal people. From its timeless one-liners. Up yours, Gustafson! To its timeless pranks, like putting a dead fish in your rival's truck. You have some power in this town. Have you passed an ordinance <laughs> that no dead fish are allowed in vehicles? I or? haven't, you know, and I don't know that I want to, actually. <laughs> it's fun to have that possibility yeah, at any point. Right? Yeah. The town has watched the grumpy old men age well. People here will be the first to tell you that the movie didn't make Wabasha. Rather, Wabasha made the movie. It's not a false Hollywood version of this part of the country. It's very, I think it's a very honest portrayal of it and a great story of love and friendship. John Lordson, WCCO 4 News. Grumpy Old Men brought in more than $80 million at the box office in 1993. The Wabasha Festival is scheduled for next weekend. For more information on the 30th annual event, head to WCCO.com links.